Ruthless commander, determined political climber, from humble beginnings he rose to the highest positions in Rome before personal rivalry drove him to march on the Eternal City itself. He is Lucius Cornelius Sulla. 82 BC. The Roman Republic in the grip of a decades-long social and political crisis that pits Roman against Roman. Fewer than 60 years later, in 27 BC, the Roman Republic would be gone. Sulla is born in 138 BC into a family of no political consequence, but his ambitions are grand. Among the armies of Rome, he earns a reputation for ruthless brutality that propels him into the highest ranks of Rome's leadership. But his rivalry with the populist consul Gaius Marius threatens to tear Rome apart. He seizes power in Rome from Marius and embarks on a military campaign in Greece, where the anti-Roman city of Athens has fallen to the forces of Mithridates of Pontus. Sulla blockades the city, starving the occupants. After five months, a weakened section of the city walls is exploited and a brutal attack leaves Athens aflame. Sulla marches north to Boeotia to meet the massed forces of Pontus at Chironia. He's outnumbered. He commands 30,000 men, 17,000 of them Roman, the rest Greek and Macedonian, organized into powerful square formations. Conservative estimates put the Pontic army at 85,000, a mix of Macedonian phalanxes, Pontic missile throwers, cavalry and scythe chariots. Alive to the possibility of envelopment, Sulla's men dig trenches along their flanks and defences are built in front of their line to counter cavalry and chariots. The battle opens with a Mithridatic cavalry charge, but the defences and Sulla's tightly packed infantry formations hold fast. Roman javelins pick off the attacking cavalry, riderless horses turn tail and crash into their own phalanx. Sulla exploits the resulting chaos, launching an infantry attack that ends in a rout. The forces of Mithridates are defeated. But victory celebrations are short-lived. Sulla returns to Italy to discover his rival son, Marius, has declared him an enemy of the state. With an army swollen by local allies to 50,000, Sulla marches on Rome. The final clash comes at the Battle of the Colline Gate. It's a decisive victory for Sulla, who enters Rome as conqueror. The Senate names him dictator for life. His reign brings constitutional reforms and a wave of executions of former enemies and challengers. From lowly roots, Sulla built a violent road to the top. He retired in 79 BC. But his actions had far-reaching consequences. His march on Rome set the blueprint for others wanting to emulate his blunt force rise to power. Among them, one Gaius Julius Caesar, spared from Sulla's prescriptions, whose dictatorship heralded the end of the Roman Republic and the rise of an empire. Sulla died in 78 BC. His epitaph, a reflection of his passionate character, read, No better friend, no worse enemy.